the world-renowned naturalist and broadcaster Sir David Attenborough is here. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. It's lovely to have you. Uh, tell me why tomorrow is important to you. Well, um, uh, 70 years ago, I was a young television producer. Uh, and television in this country was just beginning. Uh, there were very few sets. There were, there were black and white, of course. Everything was live. Um, but in this event, suddenly, people did whatever they could to get near a set. And I think there were two million, few, uh, two million set owners there were, because, and it was only down in London that you could really see it. Um, but in fact, and when they did the examination at the end of it all, they discovered that 200, let's make a pun, 20 million wow. people had watched it because there were 10 million, 10 people per set. Crowded around. Crowded around because there were so few sets around and so few, so few people who owned sets. And this weekend we have, I think it is, so then there were 20 cameras at five locations. That was in 1953. This weekend, I've been told we've got 129 cameras at 20 locations throughout the whole weekend. Wow. So a remarkable Fantastic. period of change in 70 years. Um, in terms of the King himself, you first met the King. So you were working at the BBC. You were in your mid-20s. And that was you met the King when he was, what, nine years old for the first time? Yes, I think he was. He came to the studios. Uh, and I'd just come back from New Guinea right? Uh, and with a load of animals which were going to the London Zoo. But I had a pet cockatoo, a white cockatoo, and I was asked to bring it to the studios, which I did. Uh, and that's all very well, but... Uh, and there you are, there you are. Look, look how, look how young you are. Princess Anne and Princess Anne. Yes, Princess Anne. And, of course, they're looking... They're, they're, the cockatoo, a little cocky, is, is sort of sitting on his hand. But in fact, of course, they have a very powerful beak and a very powerful bite. And although I was fairly confident about Cocky, he could actually have removed Charles's <laughs> little finger. It went well, though. It, it didn't. It didn't. But remove all was well, and uh, it was a, a, a very happy occasion, actually. I know you take credit for very few things, so I know you're not going to take credit for for interesting that young prince in the natural world. But it must have been interesting for you to watch his burgeoning interest throughout the decades and his championing of environmental causes, especially at a time when people were saying, what are you talking about? Especially in the late 70s, early 80s. He was, uh, uh, he saw very clearly uh, the relationship and the importance of the natural world, uh, right from being a small, small child. And of course, when he became uh, uh, prominent and an adult, he took a strong line uh, at a time when nature conservation was not regarded, well, it was regarded as being slightly specialist, you know. Yes. Oh, no, you know, it happens, but we don't, we're not really concerned. But he, he realized what it was about. And he was mocked, actually, I mean, because he, he said, trees are so important, I, can, I you know, feel like talking to trees. Yes. And people said, ha, ha, ha. And the ridiculing headlines yeah. were, you know, the, the, the right. prince talks to trees. Yeah. But in fact, of course, he was absolutely right. Uh, and the world has come to see the world as he saw it. It's, back, uh, it's interesting at, the, at this moment of change then, you know, to, to, be a, to be a campaigning prince was one thing and to talk about the things he was passionate about. The constitutional parameters change when you are the monarch. Do, do you think he'll be able to, to say less about the environment, to be less active on that front? Yes, I, I sincerely hope so and believe he, he will because the fact is that it may, 20, 30 years ago, it really was sort of odd bore. Yeah to a lot of people. But now everybody realizes that the future of, of humanity is dependent upon a, a healthy natural world. And the way ahead demands that leaders of the states should actually give their full backing. And I'm, I'm quite sure that as king, he, he will lead this country in a very important way. I know that you are involved in some aspects in the Earthshot Prize, which is uh, led by the now Prince of Wales. Mm. Do, do you get that sense within the family? And you've, you have known the family for, for a long, long time, that the sort of the baton is being passed. Very much so. I you mean, uh, of course, um, Prince Philip was, was very, very vigorous in, 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 cons in ordering conservation. And I'm quite sure that King Charles will be the same, quite sure.
Um, you gave Prince George, little Prince George, when you met him. Now, I read this, and I didn't quite believe it was true. In fact, I checked with my producer, and I said, it said in the notes that Sir David gave little Prince George a 23 million year old shark's tooth. A bit older than that, even. <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, it was a fossil. It was a it fossil. Was a fossil. Too. Right. Uh, and, and I had met uh, uh, the young prince, and I, so I, I, I gave him as a present. Uh, this fossil shark's tooth, which I had collected on the island of Malta years and years earlier before. Um, and um, he was duly impressed. How old was it? Oh, it could be 150 million years ago, that sort of age. And, um, and he was very impressed, because it's a very beautiful thing, an object. But somebody, in, in some politician, I think, in, in Malta, uh, saw the press coverage of this and said, this is... Yeah, this is a, one of the national treasures that have been th thrown away. Well, actually, of course, fossil well, shark's teeth in Mal Malta are abundant. I'd collected them dozens of times. Since then, of course, it had become you know, uh, uh, illegal to collect fossils. And this politician said they have been giving away this national treasure to the young prince. But it wasn't the case, and people saw that it was not absolute nonsense, and of course it was a thing was fine. But I believe that the young Prince George really treasures it. Enraptured by it.